welcome to another video from ExplainingComputers.com. This time I'm going to look at zero-cost alternatives to Adobe Photoshop. Specifically, I'm going to look at GIMP, Pixlr, and Paint.net. Each of these offers key professional features that include layer-based editing, a history panel, many brushes and filters, aspect-constrained cropping, and the ability to open at least some Photoshop PSD files. Right, let's have a look at GIMP. To get GIMP, you simply go to the web and you go to the website at gimp.org and from there you can go to uh, download, where you can download the uh, GNU image manipulation program as it's called and uh, it's available for a range of operating systems, Windows and, and Linux and, and, and Mac. Uh, it'll probably guess, as it has here, which one you want, and you could simply download and install the software. Once you've done that, I'm sure you can manage that, uh, you'd have an icon like I've got here for GIMP, GIMP 2.8 here, which will run up, and we have the program running. Now, this is what GIMP will look like when you first started out. It's a multi-window system. So some people like that, some people don't. But if I just load in some files to give you an idea what that means, uh, I'll load in, say, this nice image of a um, astronaut outside his home from one of my uh, resources from space videos. And I'll also load in um, a Photoshop file. This is the Photoshop file from the uh, desktop background you've just seen. So I end up with multiple windows. I can move between them and toolboxes, which, tool, toolbars, which also move around if I want. Some people like that, some people don't. If you don't you want to be more Photoshop-like, just select single window mode, and of course you can maximize that window. I tend to pull a bit more space out on my uh, tools over there. And then we've now got space to uh, even up, make nice and neat our uh, images, or want things neat. And as you can see, it now runs on a um, tabbed imaging system. So you can see multiple images on screen and just flick between them. You've got a whole range of facilities here. I'm not going to try and show you everything in these packages. I'm just going to show you the sort of power that's available. But you've got over here all sorts of tools. So you could, for example, pick up a, a brush and a scribble all over this nice, nice image. And you've got all your sort of standard things for basic photo retouching. So things like brightness and contrast. We could make a right mess of this image if we wanted to. Let's, let's do that. You've also, as you've got in all high-level image manipulation packages, got a uh, history panel. So over here, I can step back and forth to different states of the image, get back to uh, the thing before I messed it up. If we go back to the Photoshop image I've brought in, you will see that it's a uh, two-layer image. If we go over here to the Layers panel, we have a, a logo on the top, and then we have a, a, a bottom layer underneath that. I could, if I wanted, for example, therefore change the bottom layer. So let's uh, put in a new layer over here. Um, so we'll put that in there and we'll move that down to the middle. And I might want to say make that layer black. So I'll pick a little uh, paint tool there and make it black. And I can now change the background straight off. And I want to show you that amongst all the fantastic features you've got here in this package, and there really is a massive functionality, there are some fantastic filters. So what I'm going to do is to turn off the logo for a second, and I'll do, say, a filter and go light and shadow, and, say, do a, a lens flare. Lens flare, very standard sort of thing. I'm sure you've seen those before. Lens flare renders very nicely. But we've also got here what it calls gradient flares, which are much more sophisticated. If I go over there, uh, maybe make it a little bit bigger. You could play with this for hours, you know. Uh, things like Hidden Planet is a lovely effect. If I just try and put that down where I actually want it. Come down, you swine. There we are. That's quite wacky, isn't it? Let's do another one. Light and shadow, different type of gradient flare. Let's try, say, distant sun, or maybe that one. Well, that one's nice, isn't it? That's on top of that. And you've got things like, um, who says I like these too much? Supernova. Let's have a supernova down over, say, over there. Bit of a random hue, bit bigger. Whoa, look at that. That's quite nice, isn't it? And maybe we could um, just adjust the, uh, where are we, colours, levels. Let's make that a little bit sharper. Tighten up our blacks and add a little bit, take that down a little bit. 
you know, that's, that's quite a nice bit of an image. And we could, of course, put back on top our logo. There we are, we've done a brand new Windows desktop. Now then, when you've finished working on your images, you'll want to save things. And it's therefore worth pointing out that in GIMP, the um, Save menu and the Save As menu will always save things as an XCF file. This is the native file format for GIMP. It's a layer-based file, keeps all of the detail of the image so you can work on it again, but it isn't actually what you may want to save it as to work on this with other packages. So you've also got here a uh, Export As function. And under export as, you can save this as all sorts of other things. My, uh, just here to adjust my window here, I'm working in constrained resolution for recording. Here, we can save it as all kinds of files. We can save it again as a Photoshop file, if we wanted to. We can save it as things like C source code header. I, I love the fact that's there. But you can also save as things you might expect, for example, a JPEG. So we could save this as a, a JPEG file. Uh, I'll make it even higher quality, there we are and we could uh, export that file. So there's GIMP, a fantastic package to do all kinds of image manipulation. And as you saw, it's not just available for Windows. Here, by the magic of filmmaking, it's also available running on Ubuntu Linux. So really, you can do everything you want with GIMP across multiple platforms. Right. A second package I want to show you is Pixlr. And if we go to the web to uh, pixlr.com, a site made available for us by our Autodesk, you will see there are various versions of Pixlr you could use. There is Pixlr Express, which is a very basic web-based editor. There is a Pixlr Desktop, which is a very, very basic desk-based editor. There is Pixlr for mobile, which is available for both Google, for Android, and for iOS. But if you want a real Photoshop alternative, the thing you want to run is Pixlr Editor. So we'll launch that. Here it is, look, and we'll open the image from the computer, and we'll open the image we've opened several times before, which is our uh, multi-layer Photoshop file. You can see over here, we've got some um, advertising, but you can get rid of that if you go to full screen mode. And we can make our uh, image a bit bigger and, of course, zoom it up, fit in there. And if we go zoom and reset part location, everything fits in quite nicely. And here we are running a Photoshop clone in a web browser. This package has got me out of trouble on many occasions when I've been on a computer, needed to work on an image, haven't got Photoshop available. You can just go to the web, run it up for free. You've got your layers panel, layers working here fine. You've got a history panel. You've got tools over here. So we could, for example, go to, I don't know, pick up a brush and go and scribble on our background. There we are. Make a mess of that in the background. We could do all the normal sort of adjustments. We could, um, I don't know, change the hue. What should we do? Make it red, green. Green's always lovely, of course. You can change the styles of your layers. So we could go to the uh, layer settings, say for the top layer here, and change, say, the opacity if you, if you wanted to. You can even control some of the basic layer styles you would have in a Photoshop-type package. Things like a, a drop shadow can be added, a, a bevel. They're not brilliant, but they do actually work. When you finish working in Pixlr, you can go to File and Save. You can't save your files in Photoshop format, but you can save in a range of formats, a layered format, unique to Pixlr, or you can save in um, TIFF, BMP, PNG, or, or JPEG. You can also, if you want, integrate Pixlr in terms of loading things directly into Google Drive. So Pixlr, I think, is a fantastic package to play with if you want a bit of a Photoshop clone and you've only got access to the web. Right, returning to the Windows platform, the final piece of software I want to show you is uh, paint.net, which you can actually download for free from uh, getpaint.net. Once you've done that, you'll have your little icon, there it is. You can run it up, comes up very rapidly, and here is paint.net. As with the other packages we've just seen, you've got your uh, history panel, you've got your layers panel, uh, you've got tools, you've got all that sort of standard stuff. And if I bring in some images, uh, what should we have? Uh, I don't know, there's a, 
There's Frankenstein from my uh, human wallet video. I'm bringing another one in. Say, uh, I don't know, resources from space video again. And just like we had in GIMP, you've got a tabbed system for going back and forth. You've got all these standard sort of tools and they've got all the sort of professional features. So for example, if you're doing a straight um, selection, normal selections like that work, but I find it very handy and you've got this in all these packages to go into a fixed ratio selection. So for example, if you're working in video, you might want a 16-9 selection so you could cut out just the size you want for that. You can also cut out, of course, any of the size you want. There's lots of tools for this. I'm going to use a very simple one just to try and cut out this astronaut as uh, straightforwardly as I can, whilst also talking to you and in parallel balancing a cup of tea on my head. Well, actually, I'm not balancing a cup of tea on my head. I'm just saying that to fill in as I try and trace to iron this guy far too quickly for it to be decent. But anyway, there it is. Having traced round him, I could, for example, go a, say, copy, and then we could uh, paste him as a new layer, and then we've got, oh look, two people watching. I could go over to my layers panel and uh, duplicate again. I've now got three people watching. He's looking the wrong way. We could go to layers, flip horizontal. There we are, three astronauts all crowded round our sort of lunar igloo. So anyway, as with the other packages, lots of possible options again. The history panel will take us back and forth between all the things I've done. But uh, paint.net, a very good package to get, particularly if you've got a low power machine. This is less than 10 a megabyte download, runs very well even on the, the lowest spec Atom-based Windows computers. Back in 2013, Adobe stopped selling their professional software and started renting it under the banner Creative Cloud. Now, I'm a big user of Adobe software. I really like Adobe software, and I regularly use Photoshop, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Illustrator, and InDesign. This said, I object to the idea of giving Adobe hundreds of dollars a year to use software, which, as soon as I stop paying, I have absolutely nothing. I've therefore not upgraded my Adobe software since 2013, and I'm looking for a route to go beyond Adobe, if you like, and very much welcome a development, therefore, of things like GIMP and Pixlr and Paint.net. In my next video, I'll continue with this theme and show you an absolutely fantastic free video editor. But now that's it for this time, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.